What is going on, guys? What is going on? Let's get some people in here, and we got lots, lots to talk about tonight. Welcome back, Beowulf Nation. So, I hope everybody had a really good uh, weekend. I just purchased a Crown Vic police car. Literally, just in the last 20 minutes, the guy dropped it off at my house, and I purchased a police car. Most people be like, why did you purchase a police car? Well, I purchased a police car. It's going to be the secondary backup. You got a trailer hitch, and it could tow 4,000 pounds. That means the dual Trina Elite trailer can be pulled by this Crown Vic police car. Uh, let me just – I got to just do one little quick – Uh, so glad everybody, hope everybody, like I said, had a really good weekend. So we got a lot to talk about. Uh, and this is all going to be about the 2021 RXPX kind of basically watch this before you pre-order or purchase in any type of sea but especially the new RXPX 300 2021. Um, also too, if you guys get the like button, I great, greatly appreciate it. Also, too, there's the uh, super chat where you donate money to the chat, which is always great, greatly appreciated with this. But uh, let me show you before we get all about the CD stuff. I, ha I have to quickly let me pull this off. Wait, I got to share the police car. So I'm not pulling people's legs. I have a police car now. Yeah. <laughs> I own a retired police car that is going to be pulled gonna be pulling the jet skis so i'm still using the jeep srt but it's basically the the backup because what happened is i had these seals go bad in my transmission on my jeep srt like right before my trip going up to the midwest so basically i had a week and a half where like they gave me a lunar car which i couldn't do any riding at all which was like frustrating you can't really rent a truck with a trailer hitch so i was thinking to myself what could you get for the best bang in the buck that can still put like 100,000 miles more onto this car. You can haul the dogs around it, could put a trailer hitch, and <laughs> buy a police car. <laughs> and I told the guy, like, I had this chat planned an hour ago. And I was like, hang on, time out. I'm going to go buy a police car. <laughs> this is what's going on. Uh, so let me read some of these comics. Uh, Nick said, heard they sink too. No, jo no joke. So there's a lot we're talking about. Ryan said, what's up? What's going on, brother? So Kyle said, how come I always working on my skis when I get the notification, man? Just trying to trying to bring this out. I, I, I try doing at least two to three live streams a week. Nick says beast mode over guns is high. Well, first off, let's talk about this. Some of these wannabe jet ski YouTubers trying to copy the Beowulf with the live streams. We even got good old c trying to copy me. Man, if you guys all, we all should just partner up and be buddies. But, you know, hey, they just want to be copying. So I, I don't even really know what to say. Ethan says, yo, Beowulf. Yo, what's going on, brother? Uh, Nico says, how are you doing with the stand-up? Man, got the steering cable fixed. There's some crazy videos of what all had to happen before that happened. That's still coming out. I still have tons of videos from my trip. Literally, um, in it, like a next coming up videos is where a 2020 CDU RXPX that I'm riding with subscribers and his CDU sinks and it's brand spanking new. Uh, Hitman said, What's up, Wolf? What's going on, brother? If you're just tuned in, I bought a police car literally 20 minutes ago. I just purchased a police car. That's just how things are going. <laughs> I'm kind of excited to be honest. I'm like, Hey, this is kind of new. Um, let's see. Yeah, so let's talk about some stuff. There's a lot of stuff. So let's let's first talk about yeah, Crown Vic. I shared it, but I'll share you guys again. Here, I'll move the camera. Check this out. Liter well, hang on. Just got it. Oh, hang on. Whoop. Right there. Yeah, Crown Vic. Oh nine. 
the P seventy one package. The P seventy one, and you can put a trailer hitch, four thousand pounds. Just to give you guys an example, how much it is. The new Ford Bronco chose that. That's not even out yet. The Jeep uh, uh, Wrangler tows the same amount, and those are four wheel drive vehicles. This is real wheel drive police car. Man, I'm like the guy was kind of shocked how excited I was. I'm like, this is kind of cool. You got the four dies you can put in there. You can pull the skis if you needed a backup. It'd be kind of fun too, is when you take the stand out, you just take roll up with the police car, be like, you, you. <laughs> All right, so let's get about this whole CD stuff because this is kind of why we turned in to see this video. Make sure you hit the like button. Uh, Dan asked, how many gentle miles on that crown pick? It is 181,000, man. It, it's no low miles, but hey, the cool thing is one of those things. As long as there's not rust, you can just keep on doing stuff, and that thing can keep on going, man. Uh, put a hundred thousand miles on that. I don't even. I have like sixty thousand miles on my Jeep SRT, so I mean, I really think that thing could be going. I got to be doing all my little tinkering with it, changing fluids and all that kind of stuff soon. So we got here. Uh, somebody says Michael says the new 2021 Cedus be a nice boat anchor <laughs> barney purple or school bus yellow it's not even yellow too that's a crazy thing uh yeah hitman said you could fit you could fit a, uh, a stand up in the trunk uh i'm putting on order on amazon tonight the trailer hitch that pulls right in man i can't wait to see what this thing's gonna be like i'll tell you Nobody on YouTube is <laughs> a police car to pull jet skis. It's gonna be pretty, it's gonna be pretty epic going to the boat ramp. Be like, whoop whoop. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Nico asks, You gonna buy a 2021 20, CDU? No way, Jose. I got the money and I still wouldn't buy one. So let's start off talking about it. first up. So, CDU did a live stream basically copying me. Uh, it's what they did. And the interesting thing, well, first off, let's get this because I, I posted my Instagram. We got CDU, you know, looking at my Instagram stories. You obviously know they've watched the videos on the YouTube channel. So let's get it out there what's going on. So they had a live stream and somebody asked a question, which legitimately are these questions being legitimately uh, answered? They basically did a live stream and basically the whole video was them talking about their product they're trying to sell, which it defeats a live stream. Um, so what was brought up there is a question is they claim talking about the carbon seal. Now, if it was me and if, if C was asking me for advice, I first would tell them, stay away from live streams. When you guys, they have so many issues, it wouldn't be an intelligent thing for a company that's known to have tons of issues to be having it where people could be commenting all at once where you can't be screening it. I wouldn't do stuff like that. And one of the questions was asked that they're improving the carbon seal. They basically say this whole story, Oh, our engineers re-engineered it and it's now not an issue are you guys going to be that gullible to believe something like that because the only way you're fixing the carbon seal issue is taking out the carbon seal out of the equation completely and not having any carbon seal if they basically fixed it for 2021 then what about everybody else that has had issues with them where's their fix it should be before that before they even come out my opinion before cd even comes out with a brand new ski let's fix the issues that has been going on like when i saw my rxpx the person who bought it had the exact same year 2018 RXPX like mine, and the carbon seal went bad twice, and it sunk twice. And it's and in their live stream, they claim it was only 2019. Nope, it's every year. There is even in a future video coming up. Like I said, a guy was a subscriber. His 2020 RXPX sunk. Brand new ski. You know, they talk about new things with the, the Fish Pro where it can shoot out, debris out. Before we come to engineering new cool things, let's fix the issues that are going on, brother. That's what I'm telling you. That's the first thing. Let's get that there. Second, any of these videos you're seeing people riding these skis, they're being paid by SeaDoo or having the marketing guy from SeaDoo like a parrot on the shoulder telling them what to say. I would never do something like that. I am honest. I can tell you things right off the bat in a future video of things I didn't like with the Yamaha, which I changed stuff to fix it. It's not that Yamaha's dead and perfect. The Kawasaki isn't all dead and perfect. But they have a video where somebody's being paid that they say their sponsor is Sea-Doo. 
how could you honestly believe somebody like that about anything they have to say? They're all they're going to say is all the great things and not talk about anything that's why you shouldn't buy one. Uh, I just think, to be honest, see you, I know you're watching. Why don't you let me give an honest opinion video of that? I'll tell you, if I had you guys, your marketing guy, on the camera next to me, I have a lot of questions to be asking why those aren't being fixed. I'm not going to be some gullible sucker going, yes, sir. What is it, sir? What is it? <laughs> I don't do stuff like that. I like to give honest things to people. I've owned uh, a 2012 c uh Speedster 150 supercharged boat. Again, let's talk about that disaster that happened there. I bought the boat. Literally two months later, c goes, hey, we make this awesome boat. Well, let's just stop making them. So then what happened to me when I bought that boat? No dealer would work on them. So that was stuck with only one dealer that could service that boat. And then there was all the talk, which it was not true, but they thought parts were going to be scarce. Then I was kind of worried after owning it for a year. I'm like, this was like, I want to trade it in and buy a jet ski. And then every single sea dude wouldn't even take dealer, wouldn't take the boat because they're like, oh, we don't work on those anymore. So I was really worried owning the boat. I'm like, well, where am I going to get this thing worked on? Crazy thing, long story short, I sold it to a guy out of the country. So now I thought, okay, well, I moved down to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Let's get back in the jet ski game. You know, my first jet ski was a Yamaha Wave Venture 7, 700. So I was like, well, let's see. You know, I saw the RX TX is coming out, the new one. I'm like, well, that looks cool. So I moved down here. I picked up a 2018 Sea-Doo RX TX 300 and a 2018 GTR X, what is it, 230? Two, it's 230, I think. Um, I was the first person on YouTube that installed the speakers on the RXTX. Basically, there was no manual. I figured it all on my own, made a video. I think it has over 60,000 views with that. All right, so I've done a lot of stuff promoting c right? Sold the GTRX, bought the RXPX, and actually, I think my most uh, top viewed video is the first time, I think it was either riding this RXPX or when I was going on the ocean, which I think is like, you know, a, a lot of views. Uh, so obviously, you knows I exist. Then after owning, I'm realizing some of the headaches and, and in future things. Like what I know now about Sea-Doo back two years ago, would I have bought all the sea that I did? Even though it was a lot of fun, probably not. Because the stuff I know now is knowing that I thought c was the top brand. And actually, facts, they're not. Uh, and not to upset anybody, the truth hurts. That's going to be the new quote. That's the Beowulf quote. Man, the truth hurts. So, uh, and somebody, let me just roll it through here. Somebody kind of said, slightly updated carbon seal material. <laughs> yeah, that's not true. Uh, and the person said, laugh out loud. Uh, from what I was hearing from dealers with that is they had uh, went with a cheaper material. That's why they were having more issues. There's some people that have 2019s and 2020s where they have had to replace with less than 30 hours, six to seven times with their carbon seal. I can't even imagine how hard it's going to be for these people owning those once they're out of warranty, how much they're going to see they're charging. Because basically you're at the mercy of the dealer when you go there. I had a laugh in their live stream. They were talking about some zip tie anchor installing, which – I would totally do a video if I had if I was wanting to install it to show people how to do that. That's why I like doing the install videos so people could try, they could see if they could do it at home or they want to go to the dealer, right? And in the response from that guy from c is saying, oh, no, it's so cheap, just go to the dealer. Well, they charge, some of these dealers charge over like 100 bucks an hour. I mean, if you could do it yourself in your own garage and on your own time, man, it probably uh, – uh, it would probably, would save somebody their own money doing that themselves. So basically what I'm getting at with it is they need to fix their issues. They're not a perfect brand. Um, and I just think there's a lot of it out there. I think people don't be gimmicked in buying something just because they said they fixed it. Like, for example, they said that it's the fastest jet ski ever made. Where is the proof of that? I don't see no numbers. Anybody could say stuff. And that car manufacturers do it all the time. They go, oh, this is the fastest, this and that. I mean, when they had the Demon, Dodge Demon uh, come out, they have this holy prep tract where they spent tons of money that no owner will ever duplicate that kind of stuff. 
I'm just checking through the comments. I see. Uh, let's see. Somebody else. How do they sync with all that styrofoam in there? Here, I'll show you that. Let's, let's get this. I have the phone. Uh, they got the photo. So these these people that were subscribers, this was at Lake Wisconsin. So this this is a recent one. And plus, too, I get stuff, people sending me stuff all the time. It's unbelievable. I mean, the amount of stuff where people, like, if you read any of the comments, because he was paying for all this advertisement, like Facebook, Instagram, read the comments, because all there is is people, not just me complaining, a lot of people complaining. Um, let's see, where's this photo of this? This is a 2020 RXPX, this brand new ski. This, so this isn't like some old ski that this is, this is new. Let me find the photo. Yeah, check this out. So wait till you guys see the video. Wait till you see the video. This happened. I was riding with the person. The person disappears, and then they go underwater, man. That just – and this lake is like 150 feet deep. Now, the issue why I have with these carbon seals – let's get all about this because I think this is a huge, huge heated argument to talk about. So these things sink, right, which is leaking. You know, they're closed-loop coolings. So you got coolant in them. You got the oil, all the fluids. That's going into the water source. It could be like Lake Geneva's crystal clear water. And basically with that doing that, puts the whole um, lake, river, ocean, wherever at risk doing that. Let alone putting people's life in danger. If you're places like where I live where we got, we got bull sharks in fresh water. We got alligators. You go out into the ocean. I mean, we got tiger sharks. We got great white sharks. Stuff that could really ruin your day. And a lot of people don't realize bright yellow actually intrigues calling in sharks. That's why originally in World War II, they found that bright yellow was the best for life preservers. And they ended up not doing that because they saw in tests in the shark tanks that just attract sharks. Um, so that kind of puts you at risk with that. So that's to me is where, let alone it can put somebody in danger, like when this person was riding. Lake Geneva is huge. Boats can't see with big waves, could run over somebody. It's just a, I mean, I just can't believe we're, we keep on seeing this. And nobody wants to talk about it. And the, the reality is people don't have a voice to be heard. And I think that is one of the, my biggest things that where I have. Um, I was really being positive about what they were going to show up coming out with. I already had pre-predictions that there was. Uh, the RXPX was the only new ski they were coming out with. And I really thought when something new coming out, um, that would be, uh, would be done. And I'll show you guys something else too because I'm telling you. I sit there and I do a lot of research before I talk about anything that everything is facts. So I'll show you guys something else too, because a lot of people don't believe me that was based off the new GTR. And this was a company, oh, I forgot what country they're in. Um, but this was on this was on Facebook. I'll show you guys this right here. So what this is a carbon fiber Kevlar. So they pre-predicted, and I'll read what this is. This is a post which I did share with some people with Reva Racing with this lightweight modified racing top deck, the bottom hall for the new 2021 C2 RXPX already available in carbon or Kevlar carbon racing seat and hood coming soon. So these are people, the ski isn't even out with people. They already did it. Now I'm thinking to myself, how do these people pre do something like this? So I go scrolling down. Here's some more, some more photos, right? And you can see the deck, right? They didn't even get the ski. Now you guys will get this. This is what's curious. So somebody goes, how did you manage to get your hands on one of those so early? Their response, top deck is a modified GTR. We gambled and hoped that BRP is sharing the same top deck as they did in 2011 and 2012. Bottom is a modified T3 to fit the top, top deck. That already shows you what they were up to with the new ski of how it was coming out, which I'm shocked that a company in another country rolled the dice and they were pre-predicting what CD was going to be doing, which is kind of crazy. Um, anyways, I just figured to share that now I'll share someone else too, which again, this post was from somebody who was, who was invited. I'll leave the screen blank, but they were invited with CDU with riding these. So I like, I check up all this stuff to see what people, and this is a comment that somebody followed this person comedy and saying, and this person says, and I shared this on uh, my Instagram. If you haven't found me, I am underscore Babel. And this guy says, now, this is me saying this. This is this is a potential buyer. This isn't me saying this. I'm showing you what people are saying. More Fire 12 said, the ugliest CDU yet, question mark, 
quite possibly still have the ro have the blow up prone Rotex engine question mark still have a carbon seal on a drive shaft question mark still have a plastic wear ring question mark still have a closed loop cooling through a right plate question mark and the person said yeah no thanks that's what somebody commented on there I'm just stating what stuff I'm seeing is what people are sharing and then let's also talk about this and I share this. And so you have the professional racing series P1 Aqua X. Now I'm not calling people out. I'm just telling you, I, I search and stop to see this. So here I reshare this. And I don't know if you guys can see it. This is an RXTX. This is not the RXPX. And they go, P1 Aqua X is new do. The C the at C do RXPX gets an overhaul for 2021. The, will it be an Aqua X winner? Bustles roll. And it's not even an RXPX. It is an RXTX, and I just had to, I just going through this, and I'm not trolling them, and I'm not trying to sound like a hater. I just know myself. Get, I will be a CDU customer again. CDU, once you get rid of the carbon seal, the the closed loop loo looping has to go away. Now people will argue about that right now too. The closed loop cooling, people say, oh, it's so great for the ocean. The reality is, is every other component like inside your engine bay, your uh, the pump and all that is exposed to salt water, which can have corrosion and all that with the salt water. Same as you could have the best aluminum trailer and you could still have rusting going on. The crazy thing, my Triumph Elite trailer is like basically the best trailer, all aluminum. And there's bolts where you can change the pivot of the bunks, right? They're like seized. Like you can't get them up. I have to buy all new uh, hardware. And it's not because it's rust. It just seized because... Salt water is built up in there, which I'm basically getting at. It doesn't matter how the cooling is, but there's a lot of other ways you get exposed to salt water where closed loop cooling is not as great as you guys might think. So I figured to share that. Plus, too, what a lot of people don't realize is a lot of jet skis, for example, like my stand up or the Yamaha GP 1800R, changing ride plates changes how the, field, the jet ski handles. If you have a fixed ride plate, how are you going to make that thing the ultimate ski? And I'll tell you right now, the setup, how this GP 1800R, I have a little course, and I'd be totally all for it, See, dude, You send it, I'll put that ski into the hardest pace it can. I got the whole buoys and stuff will take a lap time. I'll bet you everything to this GP 1800R that I have set up. We'll call this the Beowulf edition would outrun that thing so fast that you guys would be like, holy cow, because this is basically set up the fastest ski I've ever ridden through the turns. Now, let's read some of the comments. Let's see. Andrew says, what's up? What's going on, brother? Lich said, what's good, man? I'm doing awesome, man. Picked up a police car tonight. Uh, Michael says, have you ever had to change your GP supercharged clutch? Question mark. No, because originally, really early on, I added the Riva Racing blow up valve to it, which really helps uh, make your supercharged clutch last longer. I've seen people at 30 hours that did not change that, and they had to, had to replace the clutch in it. Dan says, Governor at 70 by the U.S. CG. Michael says, Reva charges $130 per hour. Chris asks, is there anything you like better on the c -Doo? Well, that's a good thing. Well, let's talk about that. So I've kind of spilled a little things with it. I mean, I think they're, they're, that, I think that idea with the seat looks kind of promising, but then when I watched the video where somebody had to take, it's like three pieces to pull apart. Realistically, when you're on the ocean, you can't be pulling off a bunch of pieces and thinking you're balancing on it with, with waves. And it's just my opinion, what I just know from experience owning, because I know how to repair this stuff. I don't like how CD was gone where they got the back plate. We got to move all those bolts because right now I could pull up the back seat this see and kind of see a good way around that ski of like what's if there's water in there the spray in there with uh you know like wd-40 and stuff like that so that's when i see stuff where they make it where you like if you were riding that and you really couldn't see the carbon seal so there could be water going in there you would have no clue you'd have to move a bunch of stuff i just don't like designs like that and it's 
I remember it was always just a pain in the butt when you're cleaning that thing. It's taking all those bolts off. And I was like, when I sold it, I was like, I don't have to deal with this anymore. It was such a relief. Um, but I mean, I, the colors, I feel like honestly, every year c is just making the colors worse and worse. Um, that it's just, you know, I, I really feel that Kawasaki is a really good brand that just is put under the radar 100%. And I really think that Yamaha came with the win for 2021 jet skis. Yamaha is a huge W with that. They, they've had like, for example, let's, let's have an argument. And it was like funny because I saw on social media and Instagram, a bunch of people are sharing Skidoo gauges. And I told those people, I'm like, Hey man, you're selling. They think it's a new RXPX one. I'm like, dude, you're selling, sharing gauges where it says it's the, put your cell phone. It's heated. Come on. You just hear that and can know that's not a, as on a jet ski, that's a, a skidoo. And they still shared it. It's funny, all those people deleted those videos once they saw that it wasn't the dash. And the crazy thing is the new RXPX here is a brand new ski. They got the gauges. You can see it on their website, cdoo.com. We'll give them a little shout out. And the gauges are still the past from 2019 where they show the turn signal markers for headlights. I mean, it's just a very universal gauge being put in those shared by the skidoo and the, the Can-Ams. The way you look at what uh, c has come or Yamaha is coming out, man, their touch screen, their display thing, really nice. Kelb said he likes Yama and Kawi. I would totally, you know, I'm telling you, c fixes some stuff. There's kind of like a list of things that if they change that and it's proven it's not issues, they could have me as a customer again. I wouldn't rule out I would never own a c again, but – the reality of stuff that needs to be fixed, I don't think they're going to plan on doing that because it's another way that dealers make money with repairs. Oh, that's funny too. Nick says they're using leftover paint. They're not even using paint anymore. Like the funniest thing is they talk about the new hall. I talked about this in the last thing. However it's made, there's a chance it's plastic. You know, what should they been doing? A bunch of plastic calls on a lot of their models. But when I've seen some other videos where they keep on talking about that, that it's not, then it means, you know, when they're there, it could be a chance that it, that it is the same as they claim they fixed the carbon seal for the new ones, but then they never fix it or had a fix for the previous ones. Seems kind of sketchy to my opinion, because you figure instead of fixing for one year, you want to fix all the years, which would be just on a massive level that the, the dealers don't have the thing to fix that. And then, like I said, the only way you're fixing that carbon seal issue is not having a carbon seal at all. I'm just reading the comments. Uh, Nick said galvanized trailer. Like I said, it's aluminum trailer. Crunchy said, I like Kawasaki over Sea-Doo. Uh, Jets that heard Kawasaki's in the shop over the years. I'll tell you, go to any dealer that sells Kawasaki, Yamaha, and CD. Go to them. Go to them in the mile and just walk around. I guarantee you, all this there being worked on is CDs. It's like every dealer I go to, it's the same thing. John asks, why do you spend so much money and buying them only to get rid of them so soon? What are you talking about? I want to move to the – usually I've had it where I keep a ski like two years and then go into the next thing because some stuff changes so much to move into to, to another one. Uh, Michael said – let's see. Michael said – so I should go Yamaha GP1800R. I have an RXTX 260. It's been a perfect almost $300 time to upgrade, question mark. Yeah, you're looking. Basically, I think the best equivalent when anybody's trying to compare any of the RXTXs is a Yamaha FX SVHL because that's basically what I would give the best comparison. When you have the RXPX, I think the best comparison is the Yamaha GP1800R. That's my opinion. There's a video where you're seeing some rough water comparing me riding, and there was some guy in the Lake Geneva on an FX, and they do ride a little bit different in rough chop. 
but there's kind of an aggressive ride that I really like with the GP 1800R. Yeah, when I saw the purple and yellow one and how they did it, it reminds me of uh, Chuck E. Cheese and there was like some character with purple and yellow. <laughs> That's what it reminds me of. It's a really dark purple. Um, uh, Kanji said, I don't like Yama because the bill... The hall, you break the hall and repair bill will be so high. Beowulf. And that's not true at all because actually the paint they're using isn't like a gel coat anymore with sea dews. So your chances of finding a place that can repair that will be really high. Um, then the cool thing with Yamaha is they use automotive paint. So you could basically go, and the reason they do that is because you could go to a regular body shop to repair it that narrows down the cost with doing that. So um, what you're saying is not true. Sorry, man. Sorry to break the bubble, but it's facts. Chino says Yamaha. <laughs> Jet, man, you believe that just because they said it? Jet says, the carbon seal. Oh. Oh, wait, hang on. I read it wrong. It's hard reading. Or no, I did read it right. The carbon seal isn't going to be a problem for the 2021s. They said it in the live stream. Just because they said it doesn't mean it's true. I mean, that's what I'm talking about. Are you going to be that gullible? Just because somebody says it, you're going to believe that? How about this? Let's put, let's put this on the back. And I see who watches this so they can see this. And this is this is back. So we'll, we'll put this. They got a man up to this. So if they think they're not going to... Fix. I was telling somebody else about this, and I wasn't going to say it, but let's get it. So if they think they're not going to sink, so everyone that's recorded sinking in that county where they have damaged the water because I'm sinking, they'll have to give that county what the retail value of that ski is brand new to help re-fix re re of what happened from them sinking in the ecosystem. So if they really had to do stuff like that, let's see if they'll keep up that words of verifying that they're not an issue. And just wait. You'll see they'll be sinking. you go, oh, man, Beowulf. Um, well, there was somebody else recently, too. They bought a brand new, I think it was RXTX. Intake rate fell off. Person got severely hurt. Says he has all these issues with their CD, and they, they just can't wait to get it sold. So they, they wish they bought a Yamaha. That's eh, sad when you see people getting really hurt and then they're being cast and, and – thrown off the ski, being thrown forward. It's a very scary situation if somebody's not in it or they don't have a helmet on and stuff like that. And, you know, to me, I always think a helmet's worth riding when you're in rough water. Like when it's a Lake Geneva, I wore a helmet majority of the time just because I don't have my face flying forward, hitting the handlebars or when I'm in the ocean and stuff. Um, Nico said thoughts, the Kawasaki 310. I think it's a really nice ski. Definitely would like to get one of those in the lineup in the Baywolf's garage. Marty says, any ideas when the new 2021 Yamaha GPs will be available for delivery? So they're talking mid-October, November. That's, I think, personally, too, is if people put deposits. I don't know how many are sold out or what their level of inventory is, but I think that's basically what I've been told. So uh, also really cool things. Uh, coming tomorrow, I have Jet Trim. Gets, uh, it's being delivered tomorrow, a whole new seat cover. It's going to be so cool. The yellow it's going to match the graphics and I'm uh, getting it delivered tomorrow. I'm going to install it. I was going to go right in today and I was like, Oh no, I shouldn't because as soon as I get it, I can fly really fast and install on the seats, especially if the seat cushions already dry underneath there really fast. install. when it's wet, it makes it a little bit harder to do it. Uh. Frenzy. Actually, I had a fair amount of stuff that I wasn't happy with that sometimes I didn't always talk about. But the solace props are an issue. But I wouldn't have to say I was not, I was not always a happy person with the, the CDO. If you look at since I got the GP, I always tell people 
to get the GP over the RXPX when I had the RXPX. I, Jetman says, so what is the fastest, smoothest, most reliable ski you think for chop bay riding? Definitely. Yamaha FX SVHO GP 1800R. And different things like changing ride plates, sponsons, intake rates will drastically change how it is. Grippy seats. Definitely, um, like this one has the ankle mats to put that ski in a whole nother level. Um, to me, none of my stuff is being paid to say this. This is honest reviews. I'm not, uh, nor would ever want to be in that situation where I'm being told what to say. Because I just think uh, that's not, not a good, legitimate thing to do. And I've owned all this stuff. I've used my hard-earned money. And I actually own all this stuff. I'm not sitting there like, trying to give opinions about stuff that I don't physically own or, or, or owned, use my money. I've been wise about my decisions, what I had, knowing the time to sell. If you saw I sold my RXBX, I knew a new ski was coming out and I knew the time to get rid of it. And everybody was like, why are you selling it? Because I knew something brand new was coming out and wanted to get out of it. Uh, yeah, it's, for some reason, you can't change your YouTube banner page. I've tried. Trust me. But no, I got like a couple hundred cool videos with the c if people want to see that, install videos and stuff like that. And I'm not at all trying to say, don't buy a c -Doo. First off, buy whatever makes you happy. But if you want a bunch of issues, get a c -Doo. And that's facts. But we don't have to be the same. We don't have to be running around. Yamaha FX SVHOs. We don't have to be all running around GP 1800Rs. We don't have to be all running around 310R Kawasaki's. We well, all can be different. You know, first, <laughs> you might have to buy what's available. That's the, that's the scary thing of what's going into to, uh, 2021. But I'm just telling you guys, it's don't believe just because they say something, don't be gullible and believe it. Uh, here's a good thing. So somebody asked, Stone asked, what do you keep with you on long rides? I have to do a whole videos about this. I don't think a live stream would do justice because of how uh, you would have to move their camera. So I have like a whole gear bag. Um, and the majority of all the stuff I use is on my Amazon store, amazon.com slash shop slash I am Beowulf. I'll put the link right in the bottom for you guys to check it out. But I got the garage open. So basically, I have to do this whole video showing this. Also, too, I have all three of the Triton trailer tra trailers around. I'm going to do a whole video about that in the future. Man, got some moth. That's what happens. You got these bright lights inside the garage. Yeah, but I'll have to do this whole video. There's a whole bunch of stuff. I'm an unbelievable amount of gear I carry on me. Young man said, can I buy a late jet ski and ride it in the salt water? Yeah. So basically what happens, I'll have to do a whole video showing this. So basically when you go ride in the ocean, first thing you want to do is rinse it all off. You use like salt away. I think that's what one I got. There's a couple different ones and they're all on my Amazon store. So you have this. I'll show you guys. I got right here real quick. This is on my Amazon store too. There might be different looking ones. So you have like the salt away or some of the other products, right? So you fill this up and you connect your hose. So this is again, where it's real cool with the open loop cooling. You connect the hose. Now the Kawasaki just uses a regular like uh, garden hose. And then I'll show you guys whatever I got real quick on me. This is a little example what Yamaha has. So you connect that into, sorry, I some stuff on the ground. So this would be connected into the water line. 
you connect this. So you run this through there. It will take all that stuff out, which again, you should be flushing them. You know, even when you're in brackish fresh water, I kind of rinse them out. The Kawasaki stand up, I do it every time because I don't want to be stranded somewhere. So you fill this up. Now the cool, same thing, cleaning this up. You fill it up and you go spray the whole skis out of my hose. And I'll be like, spraying it, right? You could spray it in the engine bay. Sometimes they do that, sometimes they don't. But then when you get like the, um, I'll show you guys this too. So you can use like, there's silicone sprays that like the manufacturers have. I'll find one I got right on. This is a cool one. This is one at like WD-40 you use this. And the cool thing, they came up with this new one. So it has like this metal thing, really cool twisting thing. So you can get in like really tight areas. But that's all you need. Spray that, rinse it. Make sure to, you know, like when you, you spray that in your whole jet pump area, anywhere there's like bolts and stuff like that. And the same as you would spray when you have the salt away or the other stuff in there. But luckily I had that stuff sitting out. And the cool thing too, like when I detail, sometimes if I'm a quick detail and I want to do like full off, I just want to rinse it too. I use any of the chemical guy stuff that's again on my Amazon store. And you put all that, spray it all down. And then I have a different like hose connection that I'd spray it all off. That's basically how I do all my cleanings. And I got all different towels and stuff like that. Man, these bugs again, they aggravating. Uh, Nico said our older CD is built better. And the problem, I think it's like the mid 90s, they've had that carbon seal going on. And it's just got worse and worse. So it's been a, like a long term issue. That's why I'm shocked that they don't get rid of it. I don't know. Mike said, just a comment I've had. CDUs, Kawasaki's, Yamaha's, even Honda's. By far, the Yamaha has been the best machine. I now own a 2019 GP1800R and love it. Second favorite machine was my Honda 1200 Turbo. That's what I'm telling you guys all the time. I can't believe you wouldn't believe how many people are messaging me in the comments, DMs. Everybody's like, oh, I left CDU. I'm so happy now. And I'm just telling it that the people, if you, you know, there's some of these diehard CD people, man, when stuff's junk, they still want to own it. And um, I'm just stating facts, man. I'm, it's the, like I said, the truth hurts. And I definitely tell you that enough of what I've been talking about that CD executives are like, we need to shut him down, shut him down. He's speaking the truth. <laughs> They're like, I, I, I've seen there, I've been a nice person promoting the brand, right? And the stuff I've seen is just appalling. There's a guy, I've talked about his past live streams, New Jersey, the engine blew, bone stock, nothing done to it. The guy's still waiting to get a new engine put in it, and the season is basically over for him. So he bought the ski that he didn't even get to use. I mean, that's just disappointing. And they can't even have engines to ship the guy. Man, it is just bogus. There's people at 2020s. That are now having these issues where the soup bone stock, the superchargers are exploding. The same photo I showed with that 2020 RXPX, the other person, they both have matching skis. You guys will see in the video. He's like, Yeah, this one sunk too. We've had had to replace the, the supercharger blue. They had a 2019 RXTX when they got there, that thing sunk. So, I mean, it, the problem is this happens so much that people are just scared to talk about it or they don't have a voice to be heard. That's why I said, see, dude, man, I give you the best advice. Don't do live streams anymore. I wouldn't be a smart idea when you guys have so much is issues and people know you're doing it. I had to... Here, I'll read everybody's comments because I'm just, this is just, let's have this stuff with you. I'll let everybody have a voice be heard. Shane says, the new 2021 CDU RXPX 300 is the quickest stock, hands down. How do you know that? Because where are the numbers to prove it? The new year ago lock seat is the best seat, hands down. How do we know that's proven? Okay. Yama feels cheap compared to CDU. <laughs> are you being serious, man? 
<laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you got the most reliable products is uh Yamaha. And I have to say Kawasaki because it's like basically comparing buying a Toyota. I think one of the best cars you could buy for long-term use is a Toyota. Every brand's different. I have to say the Crown Vic for Ford is probably one of their prize, their gems, their best thing they ever made. Uh, every vehicle has their one gem, and there's a bunch that have tons of issues. And I think those are facts that are hard to be proven. I personally think I have to personally uh, I'll agree on one part. The previous generation RX PX had a very nice seat. But the seat wasn't that nice until you put a jet trim seat cover on it. And I really think personally the new seat without physically, you know, because I know how to install the seat cover. So I have an opinion to be spoken about that. Maybe then somebody else who may could just sit in a seat doesn't know how it all comes apart. I, I'm and quite concerned of if you want to change the seat cover on that, how easy that would be done. Plus to your options, the colors would be very hard to be done with that. Um, but I do think it would be Probably not impossible, but I don't know. May not as easy as you might think. So that's something to think about. I mean, that's my personal thing. I think one of the most important things is like a seat cover, especially if you're riding aggressive, the grippy seat. I don't care how the sheet, seat is shaped. If you don't have the grippy material right here, it doesn't mean anything. Also, too, I'll show you this. If we want to talk about ergo locks, just so everybody's get a voice spoken, this Jet trim ankle mat is killer. Your feet don't move. You're locked in place. And I'll tell you, once I put on there, that ergo seat that was on RXPX that I thought was so great is just junk. This thing is hands down on rails. Let's see what Kevin, we got Kevin here. Have a 2020 VX1. 0.8 HO blue, love it. Ordered the 2021 BX HO yellow and black with speakers for the wife next year. It's going to be fun, man. Sounds like you guys are be having a lot of blast riding together. All right. All right. Jad asked, have you tested on the new? Speakers they now are selling on the skis. I don't know what you're talking about. But I never liked the CDU speakers. They're no name speakers. They're whatever where they're getting made. And um, over time, they made a lot of noise rat riding where they got rattling and stuff. Not when they first were installed, but over time, especially like you know, kind of riding around it, at the end, became an issue where it was so annoying with them rattling with the music off that I I wish I never had them. They were super expensive to buy. The New G GP 1800R that I pre-ordered. I am not getting with speakers because I don't need that kind of stuff. I got a whole sound system in my Jeep SRT, and that's perfectly fine for me. Chino says, um, where's a good place online for jet ski graphics? I'm trying to put some on when the GP arrives. Okay, let me find that, and I'll share you this. They're, they're, the best way to get a hold of them is on Instagram. If you don't have Instagram, you have to get Instagram to find them. So let me find all right, so we see. So their their page is this is them on there. It's called uh, Jet Life Miami. Hands down, really nice custom stuff. Tell them when you message them, saying, I am Bay will send you and they'll hook you up. Very nice stuff. I spent a lot of researching on it and I, a lot of people pull my legs about getting stuff done. And I'll just show you. So basically, um, this is the graphics from my 2020 GP 18 r So I put that on there. That's for the yellow one. Now they did this, the whole Bay Wolf logos, which you can tell match identically to the rest of the ski. Awesome. Really customized it. I didn't want to go too crazy because I knew I was selling it. And uh, we're going to be definitely doing some work on the new 2021 Super Jet that I'm getting and the 2021 GP 1800R, and they're based in Miami. So maybe when I go down and pick up the stuff from Reba Motorsports, maybe I'll go down to them, and we'll just get that stuff worked out right then and there, right in person. Maybe that's what I'll have to do. I'll have to figure this out. I got four dogs, so, hmm, and having a dual trailer going into Miami, man, I just hope nothing gets stolen. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, Lich said, will, will Reva ever release a simple SCOM for the GP? They don't use a SCOM. You have to get their map tuner X and that's where their stage one tune is. They don't use a SCOM uh, with that. So that's what you have to get. Like if you group in with a bunch of people you might know and one person gets the programmer, then you just have to buy the license. Or if you're somebody local, which I'm nice to offer this if somebody wanted it, um, you're in my vicinity. I can tune as many people as you want and you buy the license and I can load it up for you. I'd be just do that because I'm just, well, I'll have to do a boat ramp or something like that, but I'm offering to be that because I'm just a nice person. And I think that you can get the license through me too, because of who I deal directly with for Reva. So, Zarel, I hope I pronounced your name correctly. If that's your name, if I didn't, sorry, man. Quick question. He says, I just bought two Yamaha. We well, said Yamaha, Yamaha. <laughs> I'll say whatever he says. VX, HO, 2021. And altogether, I am king. I think mean, he's looking. He misspelled it. 34,000 out the door, but it does come with a twin trailer. You think? I can't. Spelling is not all that. I pay too much. Um, I would have to look at what all that stuff looks at. Basically, what it retails with in everywhere. The hard thing to tell you, I don't even know where you live, and taxes are all different. Some states' taxes are way higher than other states. It, it's hard to tell, man. I couldn't, I couldn't give you the best answer with that one. Look what they retail for, and then they probably basically broken down what the trailer costs you, and then you got to pay the sales tax on the trailer, and then you got to pay um, the tax on uh, the jet skis. For example, when I bought these two new 2021 Triton trailers, I bought them out of the state, so I didn't have to pay sales tax. And I got a lot better deal than buying them in my own state. And I actually even put skis on them yet. They're both sitting in the garage. And uh, they're basically there when I need them. Uh, but that's something to think about too. If you if you haven't picked them up yet, check about how your states are. My state, you don't have to have a license plate on them. Some states you have to have them, so you need all to pay the tax no matter what. Basically, they're in the state and you don't have to pay anything, any type of license or fees or anything. So that's why I did that route. But that's South Carolina. Moose said, every summer I go to Egypt. That looks pretty cool. I've never been to Egypt. That'd be on my list of somewhere to go. Some, someday before I die, that'd be cool. And he said, and we have a summer house out on the Mediterranean Sea. Man, jealous. All right? Jealous, man. Are you trying to smear this in or what, man? You, you make me jealous. This looks pretty cool. Our people say, hey. I go to Egypt, and I got a summer house there, Mediterranean Sea. Sounds really interesting. He goes, we had a CDU 2012 CDU GTX 215 IS, which recently sold. Do you think Yamaha or CDU is better now? Yamaha, hands down, brother. <laughs> and there. Uh, Basil says, CDU life guaranteed to sink in one year. I'll hear money back. <laughs> I think what honestly what C do was very shocked with stuff is they thought previous years it was so positive and now they realize that especially in this pandemic where a lot more people bought C do's that every brand was sold out everywhere. There's more people out there. So now there's a lot more voices to be heard than before. And a lot of people are not diehard to the brand to protect not being exposing what's going on. And I think now people, their C do is really realizing that it, they got to get their act together if they want to stay. And I don't think they're a top brand. I basically think Yamaha is the top. Kawasaki is right behind there. Because when you actually look on like Facebook Marketplace, go look and see how many Kawasaki's for sale. Hardly none. You look at Yamaha's, there's hardly none. You put in CU, man. I tell you, I search right now in my area. I'll show tons of 2018 up RXTXs. Everyone wants to get out of them. See people bought them, hardly used them. They already want to sell them. Not a good, not a good, good sign. 
Kevin said, sink a do. Lich said, you think the Yamaha will put more power to the GP1800 in years to come? I really think they're fast to how they are. So, I mean, it, it leads the whole thing of what people want to modify and make them to be. The more power, it doesn't really make a difference when they're governed to go stop at one speed in the United States. Who really cares how much more power they throw in them? They're all going to get up to that speed and be just sitting out there and bouncing down. Once you modify and do the map tuner acts with Reva Racing, then you can upgrade the speed and then make it a lot better. Like you've seen, when I did my whole GP, I didn't go totally crazy. It's a very reliable ski, does what I want every time out there. Really nice. Always happy going out there. You guys got to see this one video, the last ride I did at Lake Geneva. Epic, man. I had these two people on RXPX and RXTX speechless on the water, man. They didn't want to move it. They were like, we can't do stuff like that. Marty says, 03 FX 140 beater ski here, $400. Mine's great. Uh, Trey says, hey, I live in Myrtle Beach. Now gators and bull sharks are up in the intercoastal. Yeah, they're all over there. Gators, they don't swim around here. They sit in one spot and wait for prey to come. There's a last ride. If you look at past playlists, the last video I did with the RXPX, I had a run in with a gator on there. Pretty scary. And I've seen this gator in the same spot. He's just sitting underwater waiting for you to come, man. It's kind of like, you know, they're there. Um, the bull sharks, I've seen them. Again, it's there's somebody just recently followed me on uh, Instagram, which is pretty interesting. A company from off subject, but uh, well, it is kind of related. A company from Germany, and they got some ankle thing, which I want to reach out to them. It looked very interesting, and it somehow detects when there's sharks in the water. It somehow notifies you of sharks in the water. I don't know how it all works, but it looks pretty interesting. It'd be uh, definitely an area where it would be definitely put to the use. The hard thing with gators are is like when they happen, man, you got a split second. The only way you can get them. Knife them in the belly if you could even do that. And they put you in that death row and they put you at the bottom of the river and wait till you die and then they eat you. That's what a gator does. It's not cool. And uh, they move really fast, really, really fast. But he asked, But have you seen any pythons? I've seen really, really big, really big. Like we're talking this wide uh, water moccasins, highly poisonous python. Um, but then also, too, let me show you guys this. Um, this was actually real interesting. I follow a lot of stuff, and this is, I thought this was, I haven't seen one yet, uh, but they are pretty big. It's like some um, big lizard that's migrated up from, like, I think Florida and some invasive species. Huge lizard. Let me find this. I mean, I just saw it before I left on that trip. And I was like, holy cow, this is what's lurking out here now, too? It's not anything to lose sleep about, but. It is still crazy, like something like that could stroll right into the house. Well, I just think Stallone just posted a photo. Like he stepped outside wherever he lives. I think in California, the big old water mountain, or I don't know, a rattlesnake. Here we go. Check out this thing. So this was like north of South Carolina in the state was found. And now this thing is lurking in the state. And they're about like four feet long, which is still pretty big. Look at this thing. We got this thing out here now, too. It's like, man. Welcome to Jurassic Park. <laughs> it's totally crazy. Let's see. Just reading some of these comments. Yeah, as Judd said, this is funny. Nice comfy seat before it sinks. I, there's some of these CD people, man. It's just like you can't grasp that there's something in an issue. It's just like 
I've seen so many people sink and so many people have issues that they're just like, they couldn't wait to get out of the brand. That's pretty disappointing. And it, the problem is that a lot of these CD people who don't want to try other stuff, they just, they haven't tried it or they're just, they just can't grasp that something else is better. It's just sad. I've owned all of them. So I have my right to give the opinion about what they are. It's funny. Yeah, here's a real comment too. Our Mel TV GP 1800 wins championships, not only wins, but dominates every major circuit every year. And it's actually funny too. If you look at it, let's give it a little shout out to Brian Baldwin. So he races in the professional series with uh, different GP. He got the GP 1800R, the FX SVHL, but he's sponsored by Reva Racing. And it's interesting, a lot of people aren't aware of him. And we'll give a little shout out. He used to race for Sea Now, if you ask the guy, Go DM him on Instagram and stuff and ask him, what do you think of CDU? And the guy will say how junky CDU is. And the guy was well, a factory driver for CDU. Look at that. I mean, you can just tell people. I mean, it's I'm not the only one. So and the guy wins races and stuff. So, I mean, I think the guy knows what he's talking about. That's funny. Somebody goes, do Yama have launch control? Actually, they do for 2021. And to be honest, the whole launch control thing I had, that I never used that. I think it was just a whole little. It, it, so, so you go and say, well, do they have it? So when you raise somebody, because so somebody else doesn't have it, so you're going to be like, oh, oh, hey, wait, do I put a launch control? Well, how does that work if the other person doesn't have launch control? That How fair is that? I mean, it's. I'll tell you, I launch control in the Hellcat. I launched control on the Jeep SRT and all the times drag racing them. I never used it. It was totally pointless. I, I trust me. I when I used to professionally race, and I did road racing, right? Now all the classes I raced in, we had a standing start. So I think of 20, 30 cars, two lanes. Well, then when they hit the light, it's basically like a giant drag race with 30 cars, two lane, one lane here, one lane there. You don't, you know, in front of you, the person's even going to be moving, and they were all racing in one turn. Right. A lot of times I beat so many people off the line. It's my experience with drag racing and not having some rev limiter or launch control. It was every mount meant mating up the right RPMs and getting that car to go. And we're all racing in one turn. I, mean, I don't even want to, these people, I don't even want to hear. I'll let people speak, but I tell you, man, you don't know what you're talking about. Really, seriously. Yeah, Nico said, man, the launch control stuff is just some selling point. Nick asked how reliable is the stage one for the GP 1800R, which I've been just saying how awesome it is. So I kind of already answered that, but uh, I do mostly wide open riding. Burn through a tank of fuel every time I ride, go out. Again, I tell you, if you got a supercharger, I wouldn't be sitting there pinging at the throttle all day long. You're going to narrow down the life of the ski just doing stuff like that. So that's just my opinion. You don't have a blow off valve, you're going to really ruin that short in that life. And he's going to get supercharged. You can't be just sitting there pinging the throttle all day long. Just <laughs> You're not shifting gears. I mean, that doesn't seem smart. But yeah, the stage one is really reliable. I wouldn't go up any higher stages if that's how you're riding, just pinging the throttle all the time. It's not too smart. You hit a wave and you bounce off the rev limiter, and you really do some damage if you make the ski too fast. Man, this Shane doesn't know what he's talking about. 
He goes, Sidhu are better for booing courses. Yama is better for straight line, but all the races are won by Yama. That doesn't make any sense, man. That is like you're living in like a delusional world. Delusional. And it's just – let's not make fake news here. This is just – we get it. You like Sidhu a lot. You can't grasp the Yamaha's better. That's basically what it is. I just love reading. I'm just looking at these comments. I'm sorry. I'm, just, I'm enjoying reading stuff. It's so funny hearing these people bicker about stuff when it's not facts. <laughs> it's like, look at this. Somebody goes, Rooney says, whatever you do, don't buy a Yamaha. You know, you almost sound like what you're probably not. You sound like, like somebody from c Ah, oh, oh, quick, make a profile, type up stuff, hurry. You gotta, nobody's gonna buy our c <laughs> That's what it sounds like. Dude, it's like Yamaha. I could take this thing anywhere, and it's always reliable. For example, when I had the RXPX, right, there's really strong current in the intercoastal waterway. So, for example, this is stock or modified. The CDU goes one way, and it did the same thing with the RXTX 300, and the same with the RXPX. You go one way, and the ski would be slower. You go the opposite way, it would be faster. So then what you're going to do, oh, that's really cool, tree frog that's in my house. I'll have to let them go. It's on the window. I definitely needs to be living outside and out of my garage. So I just kind of saw him. I'm going to get him out of here before or once I end this live stream. Keep an eye on him now. But anyways, so what are you going to do? The same as the launch control. Be like, hang on, I'm out. We got to go this way down the river, and I got to put my launch. I've seen a video where somebody did this launch control, and the others he did him, and he's like, hang on, don't move. I got to be in the launch control. Man, I tell you, racing, there's not like this stuff's pre-programmed in. You, It's like it's going – if you snooze, you lose. That's how you lose a race. There's not like, hey, time out. Watch any of the races. They're not sitting there like, oh, my God, I'm going to put the launch control on. Man, I tell you, that's the one thing that drove me crazy with the CDU. Is the temperature changed, the ski changed, how it rode. Overhe getting not where I want to say overheating, but the temperature changed. It was just a giant nightmare to deal with, which not only a CDU now makes life it really nice. Seriously. Yeah, Michael said it. Somebody was saying about how uh, what's that? Three ten R. Any ski could blow up if you don't know how to ride it. I can tell you, I know how to ruin any ski real fast if you're not bouncing off the rev limiter. I don't care what it is. I mean, that's just it's just gonna one person having an issue. It's just it's totally full of crap. That's what Michael said. Literally, I've never heard of any car blowing up. Probably put in the wrong fuel or didn't break it in the engine properly. Totally facts. I think so you just tune in. Yeah, man, you got to rewatch. You can good thing in these live streams, you can rewatch them. So stay tuned and when it ends and you can rewatch the whole thing and you can see what the chat was earlier with it. That's what's pretty cool.
Yeah, Michael said, uh, Babel, do you know of any good aftermarket speakers to get? I have a Kawasaki 310 XESE. Yeah, check out my Amazon store, amazon.com slash shop slash on Beowulf. And uh, you can see all where those at. There's a couple of different ones you can buy to install on your ski. They're like universal. It can be in there. Hey, I'll say what up, Wolf? What's going on, brother? Chino said, Shane guy just mad he didn't get a Yamaha. It's totally, I'm looking at that stuff. Look at these comments. It's just hilarious. It's just, it's just, it's funny to look at this because it's like you could sit there, like I said, buy whatever makes you happy. If you buy in a CD that makes you happy, go ahead and do it. We all want to be the same. I just know experience the stuff I own. If you don't want to listen to my advice, it's, it's your problem. Go, go listen to advice from somebody who's. Can I see you over the shoulder telling them what to say? Like, that's real honest. That just shows how the brain is real worried about stuff. Michael says, you ship to Canada on my I Am Beowulf merch. I Am Beowulf.com. Yeah, all this stuff gets shipped to Canada. And in any country stuff, too. It's real cool. Make sure you check that out. I Am Beowulf.com. Chino said he's not happy because he has this thing to do. He's just mad he didn't get the Yamaha. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't. I'm really excited. Is like, you super jet really stoked at that. Really excited about the um, new GP 1800R that I'm getting. And it would be cool, you know, see if you want to give it, you know, I'm, I have no problem giving an honest opinion of the RXPX. And showing people really what an honest opinion. And I'm pretty much, I'm an open book with stuff. If I find stuff really nice, I'll say it. When I find stuff that's an issue, uh, I let people know. I just know, like, after owning a Yamaha, well, not, well first off, when I had my Yamaha Wave Venture, zero issues. The only issue I had when I first bought it was the spark plugs. And it was really hard getting those when I was a kid, figuring this out. When I look back, that thing would just run year after year after year and not have any issues. And just seeing how some stuff is, I mean, it just, I don't know. Like, for example, let's get stuff with the CDUs. There's so much. And I have to probably just next time do a thing, have to take all these notes. For example, if you put the exact oil, what a CDU is supposed to have, this is probably the most aggravating. I should have said this earlier in the live stream. I'll get about it right now. So this is probably the most aggravating thing with the supercharger on the CDUs, right? So if you put the oil exactly what it's supposed to be, right? Well, then it overfills and goes in your intercooler and all that stuff. Terrible. That's why people buy the oil catch can. But realistically, you got the dipstick, right? The bottom, top. You should put it right in the middle. If you do that, then you don't even need an oil catch can because you're running half your oil. But again, what type of product can you buy if you're running like half the oil and that's what it needs to be? Just shows the engineering and it. it's not all what it is. It's funny. I've seen one video CD you did. They keep on saying the 300 engine is the most fuel efficient engine. It's not true. If you guys want to believe what they have to say, they're not staying facts. They're like, they're just saying stuff and everybody's so gullible. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Very, very, very reliable. Very reliable. Yes, the carbon seal is fixed. No issues no more. Oh, very good. Very good. <laughs> yeah, I, I really honestly, there. I guarantee you that some people from CDU Raps BRP come out of this thing and make profiles. I wouldn't say that Shane guy is it, but I guarantee you. I wouldn't doubt it. I know they, you know, they're Found, they're watching my Instagram stories. They're obviously watching the videos. They're quickly jumping to doing live streams, copying me. That they're just trying to divert this stuff. Yeah, man, look at this. Everybody's 
I mean, he's thinking this guy. I guarantee you that this goes up there, and somebody from CD is like, keep an eye out on Beowulf, man. He is out there on the prowl. And I'm out here, I'm out here trolling. I'm stating facts because I hate to see when people buy something. Like that video that's coming out soon. It'll be coming out this week. And there were these guys on RxPX. It's 2020. So I'll keep on saying this. You guys will see the video because it's hilarious because this other company posted this photo of a guy in a RXTX sinking. He's taking a photo of himself and it says, this is how CDs owners take selfies. And the guy couldn't have a chair, it, but I, I snapshot it because I just thought it was hilarious. And when I met these guys. I was telling him, I'm like, oh yeah, you guys see this thing. It's so funny. Literally 10 minutes later, the guy's ski is sinking. Like, dude, that is like, what is the coincidence with that? It felt like it was scripted, but it was not. And it's just like, man, how does that happen? And this lake is so big. Oh, terrible. David has engine issues, decides cosmetically, the C2 thinks better at the GPR. I personally think how I have my Yamaha setup, I think it looks better. Because the problem is it's this. And I've said this, and we'll we'll give you this just because we got him here on the show, and I've done this in the past months, but we'll just talk about it. So some people might not like how a Yamaha looks, right? But you got to remember, this is the hall. This is the hall. This is an Anna. This is the hall. Oh, wait. In the back there, that's part of the hall. Now, when you look at CUs, half the ski is missing. So if this was a CU, it would be, where did all the fiberglass go? This would be all this nothing, and then a tray insert into there, and you got all the add-on pieces to make it look. One stuff is I physically, this is physically the whole. That's enough to be said with that. I mean, it's just, I mean, everybody has their own opinion. I might think one car looks cooler. Like, I think the Clown Vic, let me show you, this is Vic, if you're new and you just haven't tuned in, I picked up tonight a, I picked up a police car, <laughs> and I think they look super cool. I just think, it's just, it's got those like cool things to be like, hey, I own a cop car now. It's kind of surreal. I, I look at it here, I'm like, are the police coming to my door or what? <laughs> no, it's my car. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, right. This has been a fun live stream. There's definitely a lot of people on here. Make sure you hit the like button too. I greatly appreciate it. But make sure you check out Amazon.com slash shop slash I am Beowulf and and all these people, let's give a little shout out. Anybody who's these diehard C2 fans, we got cool. I'm Beowulf. We got RXBX and RXTX hats. And we also got some uh, leftover t shirts that are RXPX and RXTX. So if you guys are that diehard fans, make sure if you really think they're the best brand, make sure you pick up one of the I am Beowulf RXTX, RXPX hats. Also, too, if you think Kawasaki and Yamaha are the best, I got some really cool GP 1800R hats, t shirts, and uh, I've got some really new hats coming out soon. I hope that I'll have them done. We got matching hats for the 2021 Yamaha GP 1800R. So we got the, the match the blue, white, and black, and the black and green. Ooh, really hot stuff. And also, too, I got ones that matched the previous year, uh, 2019 and 2020 colors. I also have the ones that are the blue white and red uh, to match that other color too. But this has been a fun, this has been a fun live stream. Definitely. I love doing these. I, I have a lot of fun. I like hearing everybody's opinions too. Just, as long as nobody's like hostile and stuff. This is a fun way to just communicate with people. I love reading the comments, reading off. Sometimes I can't keep up with everything, um, but I'm just looking and I'm like paying attention and talking at the same time.
Yeah, but, but wait to see what my plans are for this convict police guard. It's going to be definitely, definitely interesting. <laughs> Definitely interesting. I was like, man, I was like, tonight I got to pick it up. They're hard to find. Really hard to find. I've been like on the prowl for these uh, police cars for a while. And uh, yeah, no. I'm excited. I'm excited. All right, so we're in an hour and 20 minutes. Oh my gosh, it's 11 o'clock. I haven't had dinner yet. It's funny, is everyone's to buy a ski on their looks. And the most important thing is the jet ski is what is inside that makes it reliable and how it works. Who cares what they look like, to be honest? That would be – like when I'm buying a ski, that's the last thing I'd be thinking about, my opinion. It's what reliability is, is the most important thing. Yeah, there we go. I'm going to have a shirt come out. It's going to say, like, man, the truth hurts. Facts. Like, that is going to be, that is going to be like, my new quote. Because it's got everything. It, it's going to be, like, exposing stuff. It's just going to be, like, the truth hurts. The, I the think you not Kawasaki, man. And it's, like, it, I really think Kawasaki is a really good brand. I mean, I think it's really reliable. I had an issue with the steering cable. But, again, I bought it used. And it easily could have been something that's been like going on since day one. I give myself great props of learning to stand up with the, with the not altogether steering cable. I think it's pretty impressive. Uh, Jager said, what do you think about the shark gills? I just think it's just a desperate move of just doing anything to make it look different. Somebody said it, which it doesn't make any sense. What do you think about selling the STX 1500 SRX and buying an Ultra 310 after you getting the Superjet? AOS, how often do you do oil filter changes on the GP? I do it every like 25 hours. And put sooner if the oil got dark. Um, yeah. The hard thing is like with the, the SXR 1500, you can't really, unless you have a special computer plugging in, can, um, excuse me, know how many hours is on it. Oh, excuse me. I just picked up though, um, which got delivered, which is really cool. I'll show you guys this. This is going to be like a future video. Uh, give a little shout out. Shout out to uh, <laughs> Revo Racing. So this would be a throttle controller to replace the big plastic thing on the SXR. And um, which I haven't fully installed, but I was waiting for this other part. So they got these handlebars that will replace into the stock ones that have really good grips, change the angles and stuff. So then this will basically mount up on there, and you got this lightweight throttle lever. Yeah, so that's one of the new mods. But then the thing I got too, which I already have, which we've been talking about the map tuner, I got their license for the Kawasaki, and they got a tune, it would be like a one that'd be basically change because they run a regular change of the premium fuel and kind of all around better tune that should be running on the ski. So that's what I uh, will be running. So it's like a bunch of install videos. Plus two, I can't wait to see the new seat cover. I messaged them over the weekend and I saw it. I'm Oh, uh, yeah. And then the crazy thing, I'm selling the ski. So it's just like, let's, let's do more things to the ski before I sell it, which is always fun. So basically, uh, I've been waiting to do an update of what it is for sale until I got the new seat. I'm going to do a little wax on it and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, GP 1800R is for sale. And uh, picking up, put a deposit on a 2021 Yamaha GP 1800R SBHO. Well, I think it's just, I swear, an hour and 30 minutes. It's been an interesting, fun live stream. When she asked, will you be doing any fishing on the new ski bagel? Probably not.
But uh, this has definitely been a fun live stream, um, an interesting one to do. I've been, I don't like to post these stuff on the weekend. I don't know if people like watching videos on the weekend, but I've kind of been avoiding doing stuff on the weekends now, just because everybody's probably doing stuff. That's kind of always a fun thing on the Mondays, getting this through live stream. We're all in different time zones and stuff like that. So it's been a lot of, a lot of fun. But I am feeling like a little exhausted. I had a lot of energy earlier. And I haven't had any dinner yet. And my puppies are probably wanting to go outside and all that kind of fun stuff. And man. I'll read off some comments. It says, she knows that Baywall t-shirts and hats with a man. The truth hurts. And just facts. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I definitely have talked to the t-shirt guy about that. We got some new stuff coming out. So definitely, I think that, that might have to be the new the new quote. Because I tell you, it, I mean, a lot of people might, let me just get on this one note, just explain this too, is a lot of people might think I'm like really on CDU. I definitely tell you, if there was a bunch of stuff going on at the Yamaha, I'd be going raining and I'm raving for hours about that too. There was issues with the Kawasaki. I'd be ranting and raving. But the crazy thing is how much stuff I get sent on a daily basis. People having issues with CDUs is unbelievable. So if you guys want own CDUs that don't believe it, man, it's seriously the truth hurts. You know, like, I don't know where you're living, but a lot of people tell me a lot of stuff. And, and for example, when I went to New York boat show and I said this on the live stream when I announced the CDUs, people out there that were working with BRP, and one of the guys that was there was in their promo video when they released the 2021s. They were all ripping a new one on CDU, and here they are wearing, you know, CDU. They're with BRP. When they're saying that, you guys don't want to believe what I have to say. I mean, sometimes a lot of people tell me stuff that they wouldn't tell you when you go somewhere. So, I mean, seriously, the truth hurts. I'm shocked. When I was there and they were talking like this, I'm like, man, this is at their booth. I was actually shocked. I'm like, I should have had like a hidden camera, but I don't do stuff like that because it's not the really right thing to do. But when I heard all that stuff, it makes me go like, man, like I was looking at a scarab boat and they had those there and those are the what originally were the sea dew boats and they're just saying how they're junk because they use sea dew parts and like, I just like, I couldn't believe it. And here they have one of their racers and then the brand ambassador and he's not standing up when they're trashed, people BRP trashing the brand. Like the crazy thing, when I was there at the show, they had all their just like parts and accessories out and their stuff was all broken. And this was like the day into the first, second day of the show. I mean, it's kind of sad when you got the stuff display and the stuff, you look at it closely and you can see it's broken and stuff. I don't know. I never said I never had any issues. I don't know where I just listed off a bunch of stuff. There's actually a lot of stuff. Some stuff I want to be a little careful what I'm saying because somebody did buy recently just buy my CDs. So, which I wouldn't sell some some new if stuff wasn't fixed. But there's definitely a lot of stuff. I wouldn't like I said I wouldn't buy another CD until they fix everything. But I'm happy. Somebody wants me to do a review on stuff. I'm happy to show the truth about stuff, giving an honest review. So. Yeah, and somebody has had had over 80 hours on your RXP and never sank. Neither did the RXTX. It's, it's it's shocking that it didn't, but probably because I know how to ride my stuff, and I've t always taken really good care of stuff. But I would never, uh, to be honest. I'm like when I look back, all those riding the ocean alone, and there were sharks and stuff. It was freaking crazy. I don't like. I look back, and I don't know what I was thinking. Had seen how many people were they sinking stuff. There's no way I've been doing that. It was like really gambling stuff doing that. I would never take a sea dew in the ocean alone, ever, ever. And if I was with people, I'd want to be really close. But uh, yeah, somebody asked, is over 150 hours too much? No, that's pretty good. You know, if you, if you, any of these skis keep on going, no matter how big your budget is. It's like a boat. Boats keep on going, man. There's people riding old, old boats and stuff. It's just how big your pocketbook is.
But that's the end of the video, guys. I'm glad people tuned in. I'll see you guys next one. It'll be the new upload tomorrow. So basically, I'm going to probably do is new videos Monday to Friday. Maybe Monday, skip Saturday, do Sunday. I don't know. Uh, but it matters how much stuff I got. I got a fair amount of stuff, so I want to kind of catch up. Yeah, there was somebody, well, just a closing thing. There was somebody in the last live stream claimed how he had all these sea dudes and how many issues. And I recalled that he had, he was asking me about the carbon seal and he did have the carbon seal. It was under warranty. And I'm like, dude, then he said he didn't have issues. And then you did. I mean, it's just like, don't believe these people. It's, it's kind of crazy. But uh, be driven to win. Remember, every day is Earth Day. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you hit the like button. Check out the Amazon store, amazon.com slash shop slash I am Beowulf. Check it out. I am Beowulf merch. This is all discontinued stuff, man. You had a chance to pick up this hot stuff when this is out, but it, it is not going to be made anymore. Uh, somebody asked, Beowulf, could you do a live on your ski? That'd be real hard. I'll put the phones out. I'm on the ski in the water. The phone's staying like waterproof floating cake. I actually keep them right here. Somebody on the Amazon store. It's a Barity bag and it's waterproof. This is when I put my phone and stuff in an awesome bag and it's on the Amazon store under jet ski riding gear. When I go out riding, the phone stays in here. It does not come out. Uh, but I'll see you guys next one. Peace out. Beowulf Nation.